1979, one of the, or let's say, the icon of the off-road cars came into the market. And the funny thing with that car is it was created and planned because the head of the Iran needs cars for his military who could drive off-road as well. We're talking about the G-Class. Now, 40 years after that launch, Mercedes completely built a brand new one. And this is the car we're driving today. When you have your first look at the new G-Class, the first thing you see, it's not so easy to say is this the new or the old version because it still looks very similar than the predecessor. But I think the new one is a bit more soft and it looks a bit more modern as well. But there are loads of things that are going to remind you regarding to the old one. So have a look at the front. You find these very nicely round shaped headlamps here. We do have these on the top mounted indicators and we do have an on the top mounted bonnet as well. So that really looks a lot like the old one. Very important regarding to the size of the car. When you look from the front, something really has changed. One of the big changes, the car now is 64 millimeters wider than its predecessor. Regarding to the weight, very important, the bonnet as well as the wings, as well as the doors are now made out of alloy. And that saves about 170 kilograms. And still the car is now about 55% more stiff than the predecessor. But now let's have a closer look at the site. The first thing that you're going to see here is the shape of the car is in principle exactly the same, but very important, it's 53 mil longer. But when you look here, you find as with the front, loads of things that remind you of the, to the old G-Class. Uh, first thing is we have this very steep front window here. And what I really like with the car, we have these old fashioned door handles with the knob. And we have, of course, these very old fashioned door hinges. Um, when you have a look here, our car, because we do have the AMG version, we do have not only have the side pipes, we also have these 22 inch alloys here with the AMG brakes. We have a red brake here and we have this very nice big disc as well. At the rear of the car, we do find a typical boxy G-Class. Again, of course, we find the typical door handle and we have this flat rear window. And something you should not miss with a new G-Class is, of course, these extra wheel mounted on the rear door. One of the biggest advantages of the new G-Class compared to the predecessor is, aside of, of course, the space, the steering of the car, because that's completely different. The old one was like driving an old lorry, but this one here really feels like driving a standard vehicle on a standard road. When the G-Class hits the market for the first time, 1979, the smallest engine that Mercedes offers at that point only offers 75 horsepower, and this is nothing regarding to what we drive today, especially if you're talking about our G63 AMG. This car features the new V8 4-liter uh, bi-turbo engine, and that offers in this car here 585 horsepower, 850 newton meters of maximum torque. But if you talk about the smaller version, which is the G500, that is not a lot less. It also offers 422 horsepower, 610 newton meters. I think that's more than enough. And both of the cars are featuring the 4-liter by turbo v8 and both of the cars are featuring a nine speed automatic gearbox and i'm quite sure the next engine we're going to see on the market will be a diesel and not to get any scratches or dents onto our 22 lovely alloys at the amg model while going off-road we now change to the g500 so now we're taking our g500 off-road goes up that hill like a goat so now we go downhill and I mean downhill from here I can't see anything at all I only see landscape but there is the monitor and that one works with a camera at the front of the car so I can really see my path Now, next to me is Gunnar Gutenke. He's, let's say, head of the G-Class. Uh, Gunnar, you say this really is a big step. You really build a completely new car. 
And now we have this wonderful model here. So can you explain something regarding to the suspension and to the frame? What happens here and what are the biggest highlights? Uh, the major change that we have is that we now have an independent front suspension, um, which is new to the G-Class and which is offering more precise ride and handling on the road. But also if you ride it off-road, you will find it also helps there and is a positive element. So it's worth, first of all, taking a look underneath the car because that's rather important when you go off-road. And if you look underneath the car, you see basically you can take a, a large shoebox and put it underneath. There's no single part sticking out and that would be endangered that a potential rock uh, would hit it. And you will also see that the knuckles of the um, in independent front suspension are mounted directly to the frame at the high, uh, highest possible position, leading up here to a very high position as well. So the domes really stick out of the frame and here we have uh, invested, so to say, in a special bar that is overall adding to torsional stiffness, which we have increased compared to the previous model by 55%. With this model you, you should two different types of a car, which is the G500, the dirty one, and you have the AMG version as well. What makes the difference between the two of them? Well, there are several diff differences. Uh, if we start from the front, we do have adaptive damping. On the right-hand side, you see there's this additional oil reservoir uh, on, the, on the damper. Uh, that is uh, for every G63 a serious um, component. And for G500, we have regular dampers or optional uh, similar adaptive damping, which is a great feature uh, when you ride both on as well as off-road. Uh, improvement that we have is our new direct steering. Okay. Um, every G-Class owner knows uh, about today's performance and everybody who will drive this car right at the first corner will see there's a huge improvement in terms of steering, precision um, and feedback from the steering. When we then move further, of course, you will find um, the three differentials, they're all 100% lockable, like in the past, but with a different uh, technology where we have taken care that we have even more robust solutions. There's a nine gear transmission. Um, it comes in two different variants, the standard nine gear transmission for the G500 and an especially reinforced um, version for the AMG, which is offering lower shifting times. Uh, what about the frame? Did you change anything regarding to the frame? Well, it's a completely new frame. It's still a leather type frame because we think it's a backbone for the legendary uh, reliability and robustness of the G-Class. Uh, it has been, as said before, reinforced to offer additional torsional stiffness uh, as well as additional crash performance. You as the head of the G-Class, there must be the one highlight for you, the one we say, this is my personal topic. What is it? Well, to me it is that we have managed to, to have a vehicle that's on the one hand side even better in, in off-road as we used to be with the uh, known G-Class. And with the same setup, after being in an off-road track here, you drive onto the road and there we have really reinvented on-road driving for the G-Class. And to have this broad spectrum in one car, uh, that to me, even though it's compiled of many items to achieve it, but that's for me the one big achievement um, of this development. So let's climb into the G-Class. Um, there are two things inside of this car that really makes the difference. This is the first. That really sounds like closing the door of a Mercedes. A bit old-fashioned but completely solid. And the other thing is something that really surprised me, let's say that way, because when you start driving the car, it locks the doors automatically. And that is really special. Check it out. And now you know that door is locked. The AMG G63 accelerates from zero to 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour in only 4.5 seconds. With its new V8 bi-turbo on board with these 585 horsepower, 850 newton meters of torque, 
if you push the pedal to the metal with that car, that really feels like being on a rocket and when you lift off, somebody kicks your ass on top. But this rocket weighs more than two tons. My absolutely highlight with the new G-Class is for sure the space here in the interior because I do fit into that car now, which I didn't with the old one. This is how I sit in one of the old G-Wings. This car here is from 1985 and I have to say comfort is completely different and a problem is uh, coming up when I try to get down to the pedals. That car grows in every dimension. We have here in the interior 10 centimeters regarding to the length, 12 regarding to the width, and I have four centimeters more in the height. And this is something I can really feel while sitting in the car. I sit very comfortable. As you see, I do have really enough space above me, which I don't have in so many cars. But nevertheless, um, when I'm sitting at the front still, even though the car has been grown a lot, behind me, there's not plenty of space. But to be honest, with nearly two meters tall, there are not so many cars where you can sit comfortably behind me. Having a closer look into the interior design of the new G-Class, I really have to say that car is completely new. But on the other hand, you find some things here and there which really reminds you uh, to the old one. For instance, we have this typical handle here for the uh, passenger seat. Um, we do have this upright display here at the front which really reminds you to the old car. But on the other hand, that car really is completely new and modern. Um, you have a standard with a standard G-Class, um, a cockpit with round tubes, but I think everybody will order this new widescreen uh, panel here, which uh, features two 12.3 inch uh, displays, which you already know from, let's say the E-Class or other cars. And um, you find a lot of typical Mercedes stuff in here, like the cup holder in here or the completely jock dial here, or for instance, the uh, seat control, which is in the door panel, as you know from all the other cars. So I think overall, that's really a very nice mixture out of a bit of heritage, but loads of modern stuff. And I think together, that's the new G-Class. Another thing aside to the comfort of the car is the new G-Class is a lot more quiet at the interior than its predecessor. So now we're going um, on gravel grounds with a G63 to see how much fun you're going to have with that car on that surface. Now we're in Sport Plus mode and I really have to say that's absolutely great fun, pure pleasure to drive. So next to me is again Jan Gleitzmann. As he said, he's a Mercedes fanboy. But Jan drove a different car than I did because he's driving the G500. So Jan, what do you think about that car? I'm a, I'm a Mercedes-Benz fanboy and the G-Class is my favorite Mercedes. So the G-Wagon itself is just perfect and I was very scared when they announced new generation I was thinking oh well another SUV you know oh please but I'm so pleased what they did with the car just everything the whole package is just perfect and I'm very happy um, that car starts at a bit more than 107,000 euros in Germany um, do you think it's worth the money well my heart is bleeding because I would love to take the car just the way home but this car right like I drove it 150,000 euros. It's just uh, not affordable for a little YouTuber guy like me. Uh, but you have to consider that it's very um, stable in its price. If you look for used cars, they're still very, very uh, pricey or expensive, <laughs> however you want to put it. And so uh, it's sort of an invest if you buy one, I guess. Okay. Um, how about the drive? What is, what is your, your favorite regarding to the drive of the car? Well, I'm very, very pleased what they did with the suspension, the new suspension. Um, to be honest, I love the old G-Wagons as well, generation for generation. And the last one was already pretty good. But now with the new suspension setup, and especially with the adaptive suspension setup, it's so much easier to drive on the streets and you can enjoy it much, much more. With the different uh, driving programs, like when you drive in sport, you can even 
you know, corner on curvy mountain roads without, you know, uh, losing your heart, it's really amazing what they did with the suspension. I'm, I'm very pleased. And do you think, is this still a real G-Class? Oh, of course it is. That was my review with a brand new G-Class, or let's say it correctly, with a brand new Mercedes-Benz AMG G63. What I really like with that car is that Mercedes made it happen to create a completely new car, but it still looks the same. Absolutely amazing. But more important is we have loads of new technology on board. We have a brand new infotainment system. We do have a completely new suspension, completely new frame. The whole car is completely new and absolutely up to date. And what I do like the most is, of course, I do feel safe and I do have enough space in that car, which didn't work with the old one. The question now is, does somebody need the G-Class or let's say, does somebody need the Mercedes-Benz G63 G-Class? I'm sure nobody needs their car, but on the other hand, I'm 100% sure everybody wants one.